You can't change or enhance your client's hair color without first identifying your client's natural or existing hair color. The natural or existing melanin plus the artificial pigment applied equals the final color result. Natural hair color is determined through genetic coding. Like eye and skin color, it is the color with which you were born. Melanin is found in the cortex of the hair. There are two types, eumelanin or black pigment and pheomelanin or red pigment. It is the type, amount, and distribution of melanin that determines whether hair will be black, brown, red, or blonde. A dense concentration of eumelanin will produce very dark hair. A small amount of eumelanin will produce light blonde hair, while a predominant amount of pheomelanin will create red hair. Gray hair is the result of the melanocyte cells that slow down in their production of melanin. Each hair strand gradually loses its color and the result is white hair. Since each hair is individual, it is not unusual to find a mixture of non-pigmented or white hair and pigmented hair on the same head. This gives the hair the appearance of being gray. Different patterns of graying can occur with each individual. Generally, most people begin to gray around the front hairline first and nape area last. Gray hair is found in every field of hair color from dark to medium to light. Generally, it is classified as 25%, 50%, or 75% gray. As a general guide, if a client has a very high percentage of gray, 75 to 80%, the hair will appear lighter overall. In this case, apply a color that is one level darker than the desired level, since you will be working with very little pigmented hair. If your client is approximately 25 to 30% gray, apply a color one level lighter than the desired shade. Refer to your textbook for more information on gray hair coloring. By referring to hair color according to levels and tones, you will be speaking the same language as other hair colorists. That's because, as you saw earlier, the level of hair color is identified from 1 being the darkest to 10 being the lightest. These levels, identified by a name such as lightest blonde, fall into one of the three major fields of color. These fields are light, medium, and dark, or blonde, brown, and black. These categories can be further subdivided into medium dark and medium light. Once you have identified the level and field, you can further describe the natural tone of the hair color as either warm or cool. For example, a level 8 blonde can further be described as a level 8 warm golden blonde or a level 8 cool ash blonde. Manufacturers identify color in three ways. First, by level and tone. Second, by field and tone. Finally, by tone or name. Tone in artificial hair coloring refers to the warmth or coolness of a color. Artificial warm colors such as yellow or orange may be described as gold or auburn. Artificial cool colors containing green or violet might be described as ash or platinum. Intensity is another identifying factor of hair color. For example, a red-orange hair color could be described as a mild red-orange or a strong red-orange. Besides level and tone, it is important to consider the texture and porosity of your client's hair. Texture refers to the degree of coarseness or fineness of the hair fiber. Coarse hair may be more resistant to lightening than fine hair. Medium hair texture has an average response to hair products. Porosity refers to the amount of moisture hair is able to absorb. Here we see tightly packed cuticle layers with a resistant porosity. Color absorption will take longer and additional pigment may be added to ensure color absorption. With average or normal porosity, the cuticle is slightly raised, which allows the hair to accept color products easily. With extreme porosity, the cuticle is lifted or missing. With this condition, the hair may accept the color intensely or it may fade quickly. Often, clients with long hair may show uneven or variations in porosity because the hair on the ends has been more exposed to the environment. In this case of uneven or extreme porosity, a filler may be required to even out the porosity prior to the color service to ensure even color absorption. You'll see more on fillers coming up. To determine porosity, select a small section of hair. Hold the ends and slide your thumb and forefinger along the hair strand toward the scalp. 
The more rough the hair feels and the easier the hair back combs, the greater the porosity. Pinpointing the level and tone of your client's hair is essential to determining which techniques and products will produce the best hair coloring results for your client.